You've seen my gable house rendering probably by now. I think it's been cool. It started as a complete V-Ray project, fully modeled in 3ds Max and made full use of V-Ray Cosmos, fancy V-Ray materials and lighting, and we did all the renderings with V-Ray. And then I took it from there and wanted to experiment with what this would be like if I tried to take it into real-time graphics, specifically Unreal Engine 5. So we've done all that and I think it's worked pretty well. I then showed how to render animations out of it and see what kind of quality we can get in real-time graphics with Lumen animations in Unreal Engine. And that I thought worked really well. But basically, other more basic real-time software can do the same thing. You could have done, taken it into Twin Motion, which actually has Lumen now. However, today I'm going to do some things that are more specific to Unreal Engine. And I say all the time, like, Unreal Engine can go way above and beyond some of these other softwares. And that's why it is valuable. So today we're going to add our own custom navigation to the scene and be able to walk around it, navigate around it like like a first person character and the cool thing about that is we can actually customize the way that can interact with the surroundings inside the scene you just have a ton of control and power when it comes to unreal engine 5. so today specifically i am going to show you demonstrate how to add first person navigation to an existing architectural scene that you have in unreal engine Okay, one of the biggest things when it comes to navigation is what template you use in the first place. So when I started my Gable House project, I started with architecture and a blank scene. If you go to games, you can start with a first person character and that will give you the necessary controls that you need to do first person navigation. However, it also has weapons and the ability to shoot and it's meant to be a game whereas we're doing architecture here so which one should we start with well it's okay to start with architecture and i'll show you why with a sample project here we'll show how to add the first person navigation into an architectural project like the gable house okay so this is an architectural scene and this is the template that i started my gable house with you can see it has the lighting and stuff set up it has a player start here which I'm just going to delete because I'm going to bring in a new character to navigate with, and that will be my start, my player start. So regardless of what scene you have, you can bring in the first-person character blueprints. And you do that by just saying add in your content drawer, and you say add feature or content pack, and we can just go to the first person and add it. Now down here, if we go to content first person blueprints we'll see all the blueprints that were just added our first person character is our navigational character for our scene you can see it has arms we can fix that we don't necessarily want arms for this but there's also these blueprints that come in with it we'll need to just adjust those to make sure they're working properly with our scene and don't be scared of blueprints it's super easy what we're going to do there with this character we can just select it go into edit blueprint that takes us to the event graph where we can see the control. So the movement input is here. The jump input is here. We want both of those things and the camera input. Okay, so that's the mouse controls, the WASD keyboard controls, and spacebar keyboard control. Okay, the fact that these are all set up already, that's why we're doing this. We don't want to have to set these all up ourselves. It's already been done, and so we should just merge the things that have already been done. In the viewport of this blueprint, this is what we're seeing. Now we can just take the arms and delete them. We don't want the arms. This is just an arrow showing, which, showing us which direction it's going to be pointing. If we compile it, we get the green check to say everything's good to go. So we'll save it. Now, with this blueprint, there's a bunch of other things that involve being able to pick up a weapon, being able to shoot that weapon. So we can skip the game mode for now, but let's go to these other things. BP first person player, click on this, assign the input mapping context for player control. Okay, again, this is the input mapping. This is the stuff that could be rather complicated to do every time you want to add navigation. So it's best to just merge what has already been created. Okay, and this is telling, this is mapping all the controls like the WASD keys 
to tell it to do specific things. That one is good. We want all that. We do not want the projectile stuff. We can just hold down Alt and click here, and that will just cut off all the, the code information and just make it inoperable, basically. When we compile, again, we get the green check. Good to go. Pick up the rifle. We don't want to be able to pick up rifles. We're not going to have a rifle, so we can just disable this by doing that. This is all code telling it how to pick up rifles as it's walking through the scene. We don't want that for our game. Compile, save. And the last one is the weapon component. Again, we can just disable that so that it doesn't do anything. Compile and save. Now, the last thing we have to do is the game mode. The game mode for this template is, well, if we go here to project settings, and type in game mode, you can see the default game mode is set to game mode base. But if we drop this down, we'll see the new blueprint game mode that we just brought in, which is BP first person game mode, which merged from the first person template. We want that one, and I'll show you why. It's because now the default pawn class is set up to be the first person character, okay? Which means, that when the game starts, it's going to look for a character to possess and then control. And by default now, it's going to be going to this guy. With game mode base, it went to default pawn, and that wouldn't have found our correct blueprint. Therefore, we need to set it to our own custom game mode that came in with our first person character. And then make sure that the default pawn class is going to be the first person character. The last thing we need to do is go into our first person character and say auto possess. So if we search here for possess, we say auto possess player is disabled right now. We want it to possess player zero. So that when we start, the very first player it finds possesses this pawn right here. Now when we hit play, we have all our controls set up. I'm looking around with the mouse and I control back for, er, forward backwards, left, right, with W-A-S-D, and spacebar to jump. Okay, now using that exact same technique, we can bring navigation into the Gable House project, which I made, that didn't have first-person navigation, but it can if I do exactly what I've demonstrated here. Let's go into that project and see what that looks like, and see what other things we need to do to make sure our navigation is working properly inside of that project. Okay, here is the Gable House project, and this is what it looks like to navigate around in the game engine viewport. If we hit play, though, we'll see the full first-person navigation set up properly. Now you'll notice I walk down the stairs without falling through them or getting stuck in them. And this couch is also something I can't walk through. So that brings us to our next point, which is collisions, which is the only other consideration that we need to think about when setting up navigation for our scene. So let's take a look at how to set those up real quick. Okay, a couple different examples. I wanted to be able to walk on this patio here, or this porch. So if we click on the static mesh and go into it, we will see in here that we can show the simplified collisions, simple collision, and that green box there is the simple collision. So we know this has a collision on it. If we delete that, or say this didn't have a collision in the first place, then we can just go to add box simplified collision. If we save it, now that will have a collision in our scene. If we go here and say show, show collisions, it will show up in here as this blue box. So now we know we can walk on that. You can actually see the couch there has a simple box collision in it so that you can't walk through it. Another good example to look at is this floor piece up here, the loft. Let's take a look. In here, if we show simplified collision, 
Each object has a complex collision, which looks like what you can see here, and a simple collision. In this case, it was hard to make a simple collision that could match this shape properly, and I kept having it block off this area so that I could not get up through the stairs. So here, there is a collision complexity setting, and I put use complex at collision as simple. So the complex collision that was built into this mesh already is just being used as the simple collision, which works for the navigation. It's not something you want to do on every mesh because you can see how this could get really complicated with tons of polys and it might start bogging down your scene or causing other issues. But in this case, it was the fastest and easiest way. If I wanted to try and generate a simple collision here that would match this without just using the complex collision, I could use the auto convex collision and turn up the whole count a lot and try to apply it. You can see it still struggles. Okay, so it was not nearly as good as just using the complex collision as a simple collision in this case, but that is an option for you for more complex objects. I actually used that on the stairs. If we look at the collisions over here on the stairs, these were convex collisions so that it could make a nice box that goes on each different step. In the couch here, let's just look at this real quick just so I can demonstrate. This is a simple collision place in here. It can actually be moved, it can be scaled, it can be copied. You can do whatever you need to with this collision, treat it as its own mesh, and your character will collide with that depending on how you build it in here. There are other options obviously for simplified collisions you can make capsule box sphere all these here okay so collisions can just be treated as a mesh that you add within a static mesh to make it so it collides with your character and then when you navigate i am standing on the floor instead of falling through it as i walk down the stairs i stay on the stairs instead of falling through them as I walk onto the porch, I stay on the porch and then fall off of it onto the ground. If I walk over to this couch, I cannot quite walk directly through it. But I bet I can walk through this part because I did not put a collision over here like that. Okay, so you could spend a lot of time making collisions everywhere you want them. When you import, you can actually import with collisions too, so that every object will have some sort of collision. That might be actually harder to go in and clean up and get it to work properly. I don't know, it depends on the scene. But knowing the basics of how they work will help you to get your navigation to work properly. And I promise you that knowing how to bring in the input and the correct pawn and the correct game mode and setting them up to work properly will save you a ton of time and also really help you if you're trying to add navigation to an existing scene. So hopefully this is helpful. Enjoy your real-time navigation and graphics and thank you for watching.